Hey guys, it's C.S. Joseph with csjoseph.life doing another episode for season 16. It is episode 3, what is the cognitive attitude of the child function. We're going to be using this lecture to uh, specifically uh, explore what it, uh, what the child function is, what it's for, uh, what it's meant to do, uh, how uh, the child function uh, exists and plays out within basically the mind of all the 16 types, according to Jungian analytical psychology, according to depth psychology. So we are definitely going to be exploring, uh, you know, uh, each facet of it, you know, in terms of its total attitude, how it interacts with some of the other functions, as well as how certain types utilize the child function. So pretty awesome that uh, we're going to be doing that today. But before we begin, I would like to state that uh, we're doing a giveaway right now. If you would like to win a free copy of this book, you know, Dr. Linda Barron's Oh Yeah, Understanding Yourself and Others, an Introduction to the Interaction Styles. Uh, this is our current book giveaway. So in order to enter the book giveaway, all you have to do is be a subscriber of the channel, obviously, and leave a like while you're at it and comment on this uh, lecture in order to be entered in to win automatically for uh, this round of the giving way. Uh, this round of the giveaway, Understanding Yourself and Others, an Introduction to the Interaction Styles 2.0, according to Dr. Linda Behrens. So, if you want an opportunity to win the book, please do those things. That would be the awesomest, and uh, let's get started with the lecture. So, uh, let's discuss the child function. So, what is the child function? Uh, the child function is the third function uh, in every single function stack for all of the 16 types. I'm an ENTP, which means my inner child is extroverted feeling, also known as ethics, for example. ESTPs and ENTPs both have this inner child function. And that is what the child function is. It is literally the inner child of a person or a human being or their psychology or their psyche, etc. It is the human child, or it is the inner child of their soul, basically. Yes, the inner child of their soul. So all, here's, here's all the uh, child functions right here. These are basically the eight cognitive functions in blue, but they are child functions. Those of you listening uh, to us right now on the podcast, and wow, it's like really late tonight and I am exhausted, but it is what it is. So the eight uh, cognitive functions as child functions, and uh, for those of you listening in, uh, introverted feeling is morals, aka principles. Extroverted thinking is rationale, also known as beliefs or belief systems. Uh, introverted thinking is logic, aka true-false awareness. Extroverted feeling is ethics, like we just discussed. Introverted sensing is loyalty, duty, long-term memory access, the past, self-discipline, conviction, etc. We have extroverted intuition, also known as metaphysics, the collective unconscious, for example. Uh, also, uh, the, the great what-if, seeing all possible realities, realms, and possibilities, etc. Uh, also... Uh, alternate alternate universes, alternate realities, and being aware of that, metaphysics, extrovert intuition. Then we have the personal unconscious, also known as introvert intuition, which is willpower, desire, passion, what a person uses to find the best path forward for themselves or the ideal path forward for themselves. Whereas metaphysics, extrovert intuition is about finding the ideal path for everybody or for a third party, et cetera, instead of just like not the self. Then we have extroverted sensing, which is Physics awareness, mechanical aptitude, mechanical ability. It's also shared uh, experiences with other human beings. Sharing experiences, not seeking experiences. Seeking experiences is introverted sensing, by the way. Sharing experiences is extroverted sensing. So for all of you out there who are like, oh, introverted sensing. Introverted sensing is like totally all about, you know, like just having an experience, right? But extroverted sensing is about seeking experiences. No, no, it's not. Introverted sensing actually seeks new experiences, okay? Extroverted sensing is about seeking new experiences to be shared with somebody else. There's a shared component. It's not necessarily seeking experiences for themselves. It's like, I don't know why SPs are consistently being called thrill seekers all the time. Okay, yes, technically, they do thrill seek a lot, especially like STPs. They're all into like the, the thrill seekingness. And I honestly get into that, but guess what? Introverted sensors actually have even more thrill seeking. Take, take, a, uh, take an ESTJ, for example. ESTJs are like the type that is most likely to jump out of an airplane. Okay, there's a reason for that. Introverted sensing is about seeking experiences 
extroverted sensing. It's about sharing experiences. Oh, and by the way, whoever that was that told me that introverted intuition is all about organizing concepts, check your definition. Like, you don't really know what you're talking about. Uh, the actual uh, definition of introverted intuition is the personal unconscious, which is being able to look into one's own future based on what they see happening in reality so that they know what they want to do, right? They're able to take, like, think about it like a funnel, you know? You, uh, you have a lot of information here on the surface and it's coming around and spiraling around and spiraling around until it comes to a fixed point and just going straight up and that is the path forward, it is the path up, that is the path to the future, for example. Extrovert intuition is the other way around. It's actually a downward spiral coming from this direction and then it's just slowly spreading out and weaving until it gets you know down. It's like just like this huge spiral going out in every direction, right? But it's coming from the down or uh, from the top down and it's spiraling out. Whereas introvert intuition is coming from the bottom up and then spiraling up, for example. That is literally the difference, like kind of like trying to show like a physical model here as the difference between introverted intuition and extroverted intuition. So be aware of those differences when you're talking about cognitive functions, especially the child function, right? So the child function, awesome. So what types have introverted feeling child? Well, that is the INTJ and the ISTJ. What types have extroverted thinking child? That is the ESFP and the ENFP. What types have uh, introverted thinking as its child function? That's the ISFJ and the INFJ. What types have the extroverted feeling uh, child function? That's ESTP and ENTP, we already mentioned that. And SI child belongs to INTP and INFP. NE child belongs to ESTJ and ESFJ. And I child belongs to ISTP and ISFP. And then SC child belongs to ENTJ and ENFJ. So again, those of you listening on the podcast, there you have it. There's the information that you need. So let's get through what the child function is and what it does. So, but before we do that, let's give credit to where it's due. Dr. John Beebe, good man. You know, the guy who uh, basically first started teaching us about cognitive attitudes and what uh, the eight... Um, uh, behaviors basically it's the eight behaviors of uh, the cognitive functions um, that, they, that they are and that's that's literally what all attitude is to attitude is just basically behaviors behaviors and how they behave now we talked about the the hero function and how it behaves heroically we talked about the parent function how it behaves responsibly those are the behaviors of those functions but the child function is basically has one overarching behavior and that is innocence so a person's innocence and where a person's joy could could exist basically comes from the child function because you know you just want to be like a child right it's kind of interesting that the child function exists. I mean, it's kind of like when you're uh, talking to like Jesus Christ and he's just walking around and he's like, yeah, man, if you want to get into the kingdom of heaven, you have to become like a child. And it's like, wait a minute, what? Obviously he was referring to the child function because like that would make a lot more sense, right? Hashtag science, maybe. <laughs> no, really, seriously, the, the child function is all about Innocence. Innocence is a big deal uh, to to make to understand about how the inner child works because a person's innocence exists in the child. The child is all about um, yes, it behaves like a little kid. It can be a bit immature, but it has lasting energy, absolute lasting energy. So think about this for a little bit. We know that you have the hero function, right? The hero function is an optimistic function, but then we have the parent function. It is the first pessimistic function, right? It is a secondary function and auxiliary function, but it is still pessimistic. That means that function gets tired. And remember, we talked about how the hero function is an optimistic function and the child function is an optimistic function. When they actually come together and work together with each other, guess what happens? Typically, people use those two functions together more often than not because guess what? They are always on. The parent function is not always on. And it's not on or activated until people specifically are in a position where uh, they've developed maturity, right? Because that's how you get your parent function. It's through developing maturity. You have to be mature to use your parent function. You don't have to be mature in order to use your child function, obviously. Again, it's the optimistic function, right? 
And I would venture to guess, like in a person's function stack, their hero function develops first, followed by their child function, and then their parent function much down later down the road, and then obviously the inferior function, et cetera. But primary functions, aka optimistic functions, come first, and people usually default to using those functions first, and they can get stuck there in hero child loops, and it's just insanity. You don't wanna do that. It causes those people to be irresponsible. You don't want them to be irresponsible, okay? So based on that, uh, to help you not be irresponsible, develop some maturity to use your responsible parent function. The parent function exists to protect the child. Why is that? Well, because the child is innately immature, but it is also innately innocent. Innocence is the key. Guess what? If you are abusing someone's child function, you're literally committing child abuse. Did you know that? Yes literally committing child abuse, okay? That's because the child function is innocent. Also, another aspect of the child function, which is also pretty cool, is um, divinity. Yes, the child function has innocence, it also has divinity. Divinity is important. This is what gives, like for example, one of my favorite child functions is NI child. I love NI child. NI child is that function, like I always use that minefield example, somehow it literally has lady luck with it at all times. Liquid luck, it just, things just work out for NI child constantly just work out. They have so many close calls and yet somehow they always survive or they always get through or they that disaster happens or they or something just falls in their lap and it just magically happens and it's like how the hell did you freaking do that? You're on a motorcycle and I thought you were going to die and it's like oh no 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 don't worry man I just flew for a few seconds and landed nice and safe instead of like cracking my head into the side of the concrete wall. Right, okay, and I child, but somehow you survived that motorcycle crash. Yeah, that's basically how it works. So just be aware of that. And I child, it just, it's got that willpower. It could will its way through anything. And because it's like an innocent little kid and it has its, you know, divinity, that's, that's literally what the, the person's uh, connection to the divine is through the inner child because it is so innocent. And it's like it always has that guardian angel. It always has that providence that is supporting and following the inner child wherever it goes. The, that, now, as a result of that, it is important that we as human beings who are in relationships with each other so that we protect the inner child of our fellow human beings. And we do not allow our fellow human beings to abuse the child. Stop abusing the child. Seriously, stop abusing the child. So how does FI child abuse? Well, that's basically when you go up to somebody like an ISTJ or an INTJ and tell them that they're bad people. Telling an INTJ and an ISTJ that they are a bad person is equivalent to child abuse. Did you know that? Oh, let's continue, okay? Um, telling an ESFP and an ENFP, their TE child, telling them that they're stupid. Yeah, that's basically child abuse, don't do that. Or ISFJ, INFJ, TI child, okay, yes. Telling them that they are stupid, right? No, I, let me let me let me let me uh, reverse that on the expert thinking. Telling an ESFP and an ENFP that they are not smart—that's different. Okay, so not being smart and, and stupid is like kind of not the same thing per se. But basically, when you say stupid, you're telling the logical person you're illogical. You don't know anything. You don't know what you're talking about. That is child abuse for the TE user or for the TI user. But for the TE user, it's more of saying like. You don't know. You don't. Uh, you don't know what you're talking about. How can I believe you? Because you're not believable, right? You're telling that person they're not believable. They haven't done their research, right? It's a little bit different, right? Again, child abuse. So introverted sensing, telling an INTP and an INFP that they are the most disloyal person you've ever met. That is child abuse. Stop doing it, okay? Or expert intuition, ESTJ and ESFJ. Never telling these people what you intend, never telling these people what you want ahead of time, never sharing your intentions with these people, guess what? Keeping them in the dark like that, that's child abuse. Stop it. And we have NI child for ISTPs and ISFPs. Guess what? These two types, you always let them do whatever they want. If you do not give them a choice, it is child abuse. 
Stop abusing the children. I'm getting tired of it. And then we have expert at sensing child, ENTJ and ENFJ. These people are always trying to show you something all the time. Okay? Now, if someone's trying to show you something with SE child, let them show it to you. Become their audience. Humble yourself, listen to them, and allow them to become your audience. Because if you do not, it is literally child abuse. Okay? Like, it is not dope. Hashtag not the dopest. Seriously. Stop abusing the inner child. Stop. Okay? Ethics, extroverted feeling, ESTPs and ENTPs, mine. A lot of people say that these people are harsh, rash, edgy, sharp, dicks, ass, etc. Painful, right? Well, if you tell an ESTP and an ENTP that they are uncaring, that is child abuse. Did you actually know that ENTPs and ESTPs are actually kind of technically the most caring? They're most innocently caring. It's because they desire to give you balloons and candy. I always want to give people balloons and candy. I have every child. I'm a very caring individual, except for like, you know, all those people, including my own family, that have told me that I'm basically a total ass and harsh and disrespectful and so on and so forth, right? Not exactly not exactly the ideal situation, right? So just be aware of that. Do not abuse the children. So instead, make the children, give the children what they want. It's important to, but do it responsibly, right? Like, like a, um, do the children responsibly from, you know, parent them. You know, you want to raise the children or guide the children or just let the kids be kids, okay? So you want to be really responsible with your parent function with them. But remember, some of your parent functions can absolutely crush some of these child functions because or even your hero can crush them. You can actually use almost even the, the critic function can crush them. They're very soft and, you know, be very careful. Be very gentle with child functions. Seriously, people, you need to be gentle with them because if you're not gentle with them, these people will be completely crushed and they can't just emotionally handle it. When people tell me that I'm uncaring, I can't handle it. When someone tells an INTJ or an ISTJ that they are a horrible human being who is soulless uh, or lacking in humanity, for example, it is one of those horrible things you could ever say to a person. You wanna piss someone off real quick? Yeah, oh yeah, just tell an ISFJ and an INFJ that they're stupid. Who? that's really gonna go well for you. Like, that is stupid. Don't do that. Seriously, don't do that. So be aware of that. Um, child functions, the way they are, it's that people are very sensitive with their child functions. It's where their innocent exists. It has this divine power with somehow these functions are utilized to produce miracles. Think about it. Effie Child, for example, is utilized to produce the miracle of caring, right? Or uh, the miracle of empathy. Whereas F.I. Child is all about producing the miracle of um, sympathy, for example. And then uh, miracle and knowledge and having all the knowledge is ESFP and ENFP. Like for example, I did a coaching session last night with this ESFP. He was the most developed ESFP I've ever met. His INTJ subconscious was through the roof and I couldn't even believe it. I didn't even know people like him even existed, but he was brilliant to the point where I'm like, whoa, dude, you're like, wow. I don't, I mean, shoot, you're obviously way smarter than me in a lot of areas, man. Holy smokes. That TE child was on fire. He's an autodidact. He spent a lot of time focusing and studying consistently. Uh, uh, and because of that, his TE child just became insanely powerful. It's the miracle of knowledge, right? And then uh, ISFJs and INFJs have the miracle of truth, right? And then we talk about miracle of caring. And then INTPs and INFPs have the miracle of steadfastness, the miracle of endurance, the miracle of remembering everything and being loyal and the miracle of conviction and self-discipline, right? That's nice. Or expert intuition, which is ESTJ and ESFJ. The miracle of metaphysics, the miracle of what's possible. Anything is possible for those types and they could bring anything 
from the possible land into reality and help guide people into a better future, right? The miracle of a better future, that is the ESTJ and ESFJ, or the miracle of willpower and desire, the miracle of passion to be able to be completely free. It is the miracle of freedom, right? And then extroverted sensing, the miracle of giving someone a good experience, the miracle of giving someone the best experience, where it becomes some like a, a craft or an art that is so amazing that no one can challenge it on this earth. No one can. See, that's what the child function is all about. That's what its divinity provides. It provides miracles. And if we're going to be all out there like dumb human, xenophobic human beings, you know what I mean? Like abusing the child functions of everyone we know, it's a wonder that there's not very many miracles in this world, right? You want miracles in your life? Start understanding your child function, understand other people's child function, respect it, support it. Like for example, you wanna make an FI child happy, just go up to him and be like, hey, I think you're fantastic because of these reasons that I've noticed about you, for example. Or you wanna make an FE child feel happy, all you have to be like, hey, wow, you're really caring. Give them some recognition, give them some appreciation because I guarantee you ENTPs and ESTPs are not really appreciated, not really. I mean, that's what happens when people tell the truth and then like, or, you know, when they tell the truth and no one decides to listen to them for some reason and then they just get all butthurt. It's like, oh, I wish you said that a lot easier. You know, I wish you, I wish you weren't so harsh about that. But it's like, I'm actually doing you a service by like criticizing you in the way that no one else has the guts to do it for you. So it's actually me being really caring about you because if I didn't care about you, I wouldn't say anything to you to begin with. And I just let you go on in your merry way onto your path to destruction that you already are. You know, the road to perdition. Maybe like you shouldn't do that. Maybe you should actually listen to the TI parent because it's for your own good. Yeah, see, that's how far every child is willing to go. Willing to go for other people. That's how caring they actually are, right? Miracles. It's all about miracle production and the miracles can happen provided that people's child functions are not inhibited, that they are not being abused. They are insanely important to everyone. And it is very optimistic. You want the child function to be as optimistic as possible because it's where a person's joy exists. If you want someone to be joyful and have joy, then make sure that you are supporting other people's child functions. It's very important. Find out what they are, help them, comfort them, keep them safe, right? Uh, support their innocence. If they do something that just seems absolutely dumb to you, like for example, if you're a TE parent and you see someone with TI child, you're automatically going to look down at that person as being childish with their thinking. Think about that. Or you have experted feeling child like me and I see an FI child or a, or, a, or a TI parent like me, right? You know, it's, it's, and I see a TE child, I'm automatically going to assume that that person is being immature with their thinking, right? It's just natural to us human beings that we do this, but you can't do that. You have to be careful, you have to be more aware. It is our responsibility as a race to understand each other. We have to understand each other's cognitive functions. We have to understand people's innocence and where it is. We have to support their innocence. We have to support their divinity to get those miracles that we are looking for. Because I guarantee you, it's a miracle every time NI child makes it through the minefield, every time they survive those motorcycle accidents, every time they have triple bypass surgery uh, with their heart potentially multiple times and they survive every time for some reason, right? It's miraculous. The child function is all about miracles. It is the miracle engine, but we're too busy abusing the children that we wonder why we don't have any miracles anymore. And we can, as a race, produce miracles provided that we don't step on the children anymore. Will someone please do something for the sake of the children? Please. Every single human being, it doesn't matter if they're a child or an adult, has a child function. Bring it out. Understand it. Support it. Feed it. Nurture it. 
not just your own, but your neighbors. Remember, love your neighbor as yourself, right? You know, that means you love your child function and take care of it, but you also help other people with their child function and then take care of it, even if it's not compatible with yours. Doesn't matter. It is your responsibility to understand other people and understand what their child function is so that you could be there to help nurture it. It's not necessarily there to grow or grow up. You gotta look at the child function kind of like Peter Pan and Neverland. But still, that Neverland place is full of miracles, right? So there's a time and place for just being a kid. There's a time and place for that. That's, you know, and being childlike, that divinity, the divine child, as the cognitive function is actually referred to, the divine child, right? There's a reason for that. It's optimistic. Do not take the optimism out of the child. Do not take the wind out of its sails, the fire out of its engine. Do not do that to the child. Instead, motivate the child, support the child, feed the child, be there for the child. Do not take advantage of the child. Do not abuse it, right? It's very critical for our race to understand this. If we are going to have a good future, we have to be here, ready, and now to take it that far. Understand each other, support the child so that we can get the miracles so that our race can have a better quality of life and have a better future. That is our requirement. That is our mission. That's the child function. Let's see if I, uh, oh yeah. So that's what I call the, uh, the heart of the matter. So the child function interacts also, uh, it can combine with other functions. Like for example, it can combine with a demon. And that's what you call the demonic child. So like an FI child, an INTJ or ISTJ, when it can go demon mode, for example, in an INTJ, it becomes like this insanely selfish inner child where it's just so focused on only its own personal experience and nobody else's, and it will burn everything down for the sake of it getting its own experience, period, end of story, right? Then ISTJ, it's a little bit different. It's like, I'm going to get what I want and I don't care what you say right? It's kind of like the, the demonic child is that child in the candy shop, or at least in the candy section of the store, and he's on his back screaming on the floor, right? That's literally the same thing. That is the demonic child, right? So there's a lot of different combinations that in the function stack where the child can team up with other functions. The child, the best team up for the function, uh, for the functions, and it's the most common team up for the child function, is to team up with the hero function. The hero function is very important for the team up because it's like literally the, the hero's flying around saving the world and the child is riding on the back of the hero because the hero has a special relationship with the little kid. It's like the, it's like the little kid, the child, is literally the hero function's number one fan, right? And he likes to support his own private little fan club with the little kid, right? Obviously, the parent is criticizing the hero for like over saving the world, for example, and how that may put the children at risk, the child functions at risk, because it is the parent's job, the parent function's job to protect the inner child and protect the inner child of other people. Oh yeah, and if you're not doing that, that makes you immature. So like, wake up people, don't be immature. Use your parent function to protect and support and nurture your child function and the child functions of others, even if you are necessarily incompatible. It's still your responsibility. You can at least have the, be cognizant of emulating for other people and emulate for their sake. You know, love your neighbors yourself because if you're emulating for other people, it would kind of make sense that other people would be, then be willing to emulate for you. Huh? Exactly. So just realize that when it comes um, when it comes to these functions, like the hero function is there for the child function, uh, they could team up. The parent and the child can team up as well for some, you know, nurturing time, etc. For some mentoring, uh, the inferior function can team up with the uh, the child function to help the person get over its insecurity. Sometimes people need a miracle to get out of their fear to conquer their fears. Sometimes the nemesis can make the child overly worried or the child can help the nemesis uh, become less worried, for example. It goes both ways. It is a two-way street between all the cognitive functions uh, with each other, essentially. But again, the child can 
basically team up with anyone. Uh, funny, a really interesting combination is the uh, the critic function and the child. Yeah, when like the old man's like, hey, I got my grandson here, you know, and uh, you better not be, uh, you never better not be messing with my grandson or I'll pull out my 45. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of an interesting, a very uh, interesting uh, point of view when you see that, um, when that grandparent function, the critic is taking care of the inner child, similar as to what the parent would be doing. And it's doing this from like wise old person point of view, but that's the positive way. The negative way is like getting the child into really bad things, giving the child uncontained knowledge, which basically means the critic becomes like the witch or the wizard where they're doing like negative, um, you know, giving the child like, fire to play with like literally it's literally like playing with fire allowing the inner child to play with fire that's literally how it can go badly with a critic function also known as the scenics uh or the witch uh for the inner child for example so so yeah just be aware of the cognitive combinations that come into place with the with these functions especially in terms of the child and how it can actually go down south or it could actually become a good thing depending on the situation. So just be aware of it. But remember, you can keep it in the good realm by developing your parent function. Your parent function is the path to maturity. Otherwise, without a parent function, your child is just going to have free reign to run around in your head, keeping you immature, keeping you in Peter Pan land, keeping you in Neverland. You need that parent function in order to be able to grow the child function to a point and have personal maturity that you are able to produce miracles, which is the point or the purpose of the child function, to access the child function's divinity for the purpose of producing miracles in your life and the lives of other people around you. It's just like, for example, a SI child has all the faith in the world. And like it is said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to the mountain, you know, the obstacles of life, you could say to the mountain, be thou removed, right? Okay, yeah, like, I get that's all like biblical model there. But the point is, is that the child function has the miraculous divine power, you can access it, but you can't access it. If you do not have your parent functions maturity developed, otherwise, it'll just rain free, and you're on Neverland, and you're not growing up anytime soon. Yeah, what a waste. You know what that causes people to do majoring in minor things. That causes failure to launch syndrome. That causes addiction to video games and living in a mother's basement till they're like 30 plus years old, etc. You know, like don't do that. And that's what can happen if you just let the inner child just run free all over the place without your parent function, or if the child function is not willing to listen to other parent, people's parent functions because you don't have a parent function to interface with those fellow parent functions. Because remember, it takes a village. It takes a village to raise a child. It's very important that you understand this, right? So raise your child. By raising your inner child, you will be able to access that divine miraculous power to produce miracles in your life and the lives of others, to remove those obstacles of life, those mountains of life. Understand that, that is how it works. That is the point and purpose of the child function, so. Anyway, I think that is enough uh, dead horse beating, and it's also extremely um, late for me here. So anyway, with that being said, uh, if you uh, liked what you heard and uh, found that useful, helpful, educational, uh, enlightening, insightful, please subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Also leave a like while you're at it and a comment below if you have any question about the uh, child function. And make sure also you, if you haven't seen the hero function or the parent function lecture that you check that out as well. I will have the playlist posted at the end of this lecture uh, so that you can access it. Uh, thank you all for your patience with me this week and that I haven't been around. I will come back. It's just I've been completely overwhelmed and dealing with a lot of stuff right now, including how uh, I had food poisoning and it just completely took me out for a while. So anyway, I'm glad to be back and we're going to be doing some more streams. Uh, don't forget our new stream uh, or our Q&A stream. We're actually going to be changing that to weekly from now on. And uh, we're also doing our how to type stream weekly as well. We're probably going to be doing those Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, mostly. So just be aware of that uh, for our stream uh, times. We'll get that schedule posted, I think, uh, on the channel so that like people know about that. If you haven't joined uh, Discord yet, the link is in the description below. Discord is where we collect the Q&A um, Q questions and we read those off. 
Um, uh, for those of you that uh, uh, would prefer to have your questions answered, just submit your Q&A questions there and they'll be added to the queue and then we'll do that for our uh, weekly live stream. Uh, and then also our meetup group, we had a fantastic meetup group, had uh, 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 some people show up to our uh, meetup group this last week. If you want to get in on that and you're in the Bay Area or near the Bay Area for that meetup group, that is uh, uh, posted also in the description below. So anyway, with all that being said, you folks have a good night and I'll see you tomorrow.